Hi, I'm Canadian singer-songwriter Randy Stewart, and you're listening to The Other Side Radio Show, starring Joshua and Jeremy Davis. We're live at the Best Western Belleville, and it starts now. Welcome once again to the other side radio show. I'm Joshua Davis. I'm Jeremy Davis, and as you just heard, we have a good friend, Canadian singer-songwriter Randy Stewart in the house. Welcome to our show. It's wonderful to have you here today. Let's rock it. Thank you, Jeremy. I'm honored to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Well, it's our pleasure. Now, first of all, Randy, can you start out by telling our listeners how your musical journey began? I'll tell you how my musical journey re-began. I played music since I was a teenager, and I'm no longer a teenager. Um, and I played for several decades and quit. Just didn't play music at all for more than... 30 years um, for a variety of reasons but uh, got inspired by some friends to start playing again and uh, started coming out and playing with people in uh, the Quinty area and was just overwhelmed with their uh, with how nurturing they were and how open they were to new music and new people so I'm back and I'm doing it again well, that's just wonderful to hear. And what we try to do since the inception of all our shows, whether it was on radio or television, is to reignite the dream that lies within. And once you have a dream and once you have a, a passion, it really never dies. You just sometimes have to find it again. Would you agree with that or not? Absolutely, and that's kind of exactly what happened with me. Well, Randy, you grew up in Thunder Bay, so can you tell us about that? Yes, I was born in Port Arthur, and uh, that became Thunder Bay while I was there, and uh, it was just a, a perfect place to grow up. Now, one of the interesting tidbits you were sharing with Josh and me off air is you got to meet the legendary Canadian Paul Schaefer. And people would remember Paul, of course, um, in um, our generation and um, others um, on uh, CBS's Late Show with um, the former host, David Letterman. And he um, is a prominent Canadian who has his own band. And he even scored the Blues Brothers music. And um, you were telling us a little bit of um, meeting him and that. Do, do you want to elaborate? And we'll go from there. Randy? Well, I remember from a, a, a long, long, long time ago going to see Paul Schaefer play in rock bands in Thunder Bay. And when I finally got some kind of band together with a, a few friends, myself, uh, one of our uh, uh, guitar players in the band was actually very, very good friends with Paul Schaefer. And he came out to see us at least once, uh, although he didn't at that time get to Thunder Bay very much, obviously. So, so busy, and uh, his career is just stellar so um but we we, we we did get to meet him and uh he was uh he did enjoy the band for at least one evening from what i from what he said 
<laughs> now, being a part of a, a band in high school, you must have been a real heartthrob with the ladies. Uh, no, not really. Yeah. Um, it doesn't always work that way, and uh, I was, uh, in fact, married and raising a family at the time, so no. <laughs> Now, one of the questions we like to often ask any artist who appears as a special guest on our show is who were some of your major musical influences and why? And um, do you think that really shines through in your original material that you pen today? and turn into those extraordinary songs that we hear and you per perform. Yes, of course. My, my music, uh, you, that's what influences are. They, they color what you do. Um, my influences are, my favorite songwriter in the world is a man by the name of Guy Clark, a uh, very famous uh, songwriter from Texas. Um, I also really, really like the work of Tom Waits, Bruce Springsteen, um, Bob Dylan, of course, um, among others. John Prine. Let's not forget John Prine. Dear Abby, what defines a good singer-songwriter, in your opinion, and how how has it changed over the years? These are tough questions. <laughs> I uh, I don't know what defines a good singer-songwriter. Being able to to connect with people, I think, is probably the most important thing. That that your songs uh, reach people on uh, not just pretty music, not just pretty words, but for some reason, the two of them put together just get inside people's heads somehow. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's changed ever. Um, it's just done differently. Well, absolutely. Some uh, good things never change. They just evolve over time, as you were alluding to, I'm sure. Now, early on, at the start of your remarkable career, um, you um, got recorded by the CBC. Um, that must have been a real thrill for you. Um, uh, was it something that, that you envisioned? And was it nerve-wracking um, starting out um, and getting that kind of recognition? Randy? It was surprising. It was, it was very early. Um, I was playing some of my songs at a party, and there happened to be someone from CBC there who said, would you like to record them with us? And uh, I think they do that in uh, places like Thunder Bay. They look for local talent in places like Belleville too. I'm sure they look for local talent and and try to bring it out. At least they did in that day. And so uh, yeah, I, I I think there were four songs recorded, and um, uh, it, it was it was an honor and it totally floored me because I had only written four songs at that point. I think anyway, it was uh, yeah, it was it was a great honor. You said early on in your career that the Beatles were an influence on you and that's why you began, began singing and um, you never stopped and you, you had a um, passion for their music. What, what was so revolutionary for you with the Beatles? Well, what I mean by that, when I when I say that, is that the Beatles were an influence on everybody. And when you're 13 or 14, and the Beatles come on Ed Sullivan, all of a sudden you want to do that. If you have any kind of uh, leaning toward that at all, so it was the British invasion, and it was all that explosion of mu music that happened in the 60s that took so many of us ahead. Um, and of course, the Beatles are amazing songwriters and amazing artists. And the haircuts. Oh, before we go any further, let's get right to the music. Uh, you want to perform some original songs right here live at the Best Western, and we can't wait 
to delight our listeners with this. Uh, we just met, met you a while back at this year's, this past year's Jingle Bell Hop at Canadian 150 Christmas celebration, and we were so honored that you um, chose to be a part of it. And, and now we're friends, and it seems like we've known you forever. Thank you very much. I was uh, I was honored to be asked. It was uh, unexpected, and uh, I, yeah, like you said, it, it's it's gone on to other things. So I really, really, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me there. What are we going to hear? Uh, I'll play an original song called uh, "Funny Hats and Noses." It's a song that I wrote after uh, we had a party one night, and uh, just everybody ended up wearing disguises. Uh, I looked around the room and people had funny hats on and Groucho glasses and uh, a whole array of different things that we seem to find on shelves in the house. And uh, so I wrote this song and it didn't end up, end up being about the party at all, but uh, I thought it was a pretty good title. Take yeah. it away. <laughs> Nobody special left to see. So if you got some time, you could spend it here with me. I got my feet on the ground. Cause I've been around. You can stay and help me choke this whiskey down. No, sometimes I didn't treat you right And I'd stay out late and dance and drink all night Well, everybody's got his vice Mine's not thinking twice And all I can give you now is this bad advice All funny hats and noses out there It ain't no bed of roses, beware Keep your back to the wall Don't trust nothing at all It's funny hats and noses everywhere Yeah, try and keep that sparkle in your eye. It adds a special something to the light. Remember to hit your mark and deliver from the heart. Never forget that conversation is an art. It's all funny hats and noses out there It ain't no bed of roses beware Keep your back to the wall Don't trust nothing at all Funny hats and noses everywhere After all we've been through We come to this I don't know you I don't know why We're in this place Don't know what that Is on your face I don't know why We stay in here It's so Damned insincere Well 
And I don't look for romance I never do But romance is the way To get to you Well I'd end up on my knees You'd end up giving in to my pleas We'd end up Staking identities It's all funny hats and noses out there It ain't no bed of roses beware Keep your back to the wall Don't trust nothing at all Funny hats and noses everywhere It's all funny hats and noses everywhere Well, that's just incredible. Uh, that really gives it uh, something to think about. And, and so how long did it take you to uh, write a song song like that? That song took about, uh, I'm going to say an hour to write, um, but they can take years. So do you ever get uh, frustrated with the uh, creative process that comes in with songwriting? It's, it's, uh, it's an impossible thing, uh, and whenever it works, it's you never know why it's like why did this work this time and it didn't work last time it's it's completely frustrating uh, I don't know why I do it <laughs> have you um, considered um, you know um, composing an album well yeah they, they they all go together into an album or a collection it's it's not it's not something that I don't know I would consider I would not cons I would consider never consider not doing it um, yeah it's just like when they come together and when they when the when they're all right you know they all fit together as a good theme or work together as a package I guess I know when I'm when I'm inspired I have to get something down or it, it goes away fast and um, I'm I'm an inspirational writer, like I told you, and the passion for writing is is always there. You you don't know where it comes from, really. You're inspired by everyday um, things outside your window pane, the sunshine, the snow, the birds or the trees or something like that and uh, it's just a fascinating thing that's how it works with me and um, I'm very thrilled with my work that it's gone all over the world um, thanks to my brother um, that put together three wonderful books and um, my uncle has turned some of my poems into music, so I'm fascinated about that too. And my sister is also very talented with that as well. Well, yes, um, so um, I guess the uh, creative uh, bug has always hit our household. Um, as you look ahead in 2018 and beyond, um, what do you want to achieve? And before we have to go, um, uh, because the time goes so fast, um, maybe we'll have you you play us out on another song as well. So, uh, but what do you want to do next, Randy? And um, how can people uh, get a hold of you and learn more about your music? Yeah, uh, how to get a hold of me. Um, you can get me on Facebook, but I can't. Well, just look me up on Facebook, Randy Stewart. Um, 
I'm on YouTube. Uh, there's some links uh, there. If you search me on uh, on YouTube, there's some performance links. I'm playing uh, at the Grind Cafe in February 23rd, I believe. It's a Friday night. Um, and I'm playing at the Port Bistro in April, on April 21st. I also am at uh, a weekly open mic at the Port Bistro every Sunday night from 6 to 9. Um, it's, uh, so we're well open to other people uh, showing up for that. I'm uh, hosting usually one out of three weeks. I host there, but I'm usually there every week. And uh, I'm also appearing at Front Porch Ruckus in Tweed sometime in June. And that's what I know about so far. We look forward to having you back at a future Other Side Media Group event. As we talked about, uh, there's going to be, uh, we're going to have another special event in the spring. Uh, it's not just Other Side Media, well, it happens to be our birthday, so, but we'll, we'll uh, marry them both together in, in a sense because they both were, no, not the same years, but they were both born around the same time the organization and of course we're much um, different in age but <laughs> we'll go from there but um, why don't you why don't you do the, um, why don't you decide to um, uh, play us out on one of your other favorite tunes and we'll go from there and we look forward to having you back oh Josh wants to jump in with one more thing. I wanted to know your opinion on, on the latest um, downloading of music. What is your opinion on that? And um, do you find that a benefit for the people in the 21st century? Or is it more a negative impact. I'm on the benefit side, um, although I understand the uh, the the negative thing. Um, music and technology are changing, and now you can get you can hear music by people all over the world who aren't famous and are making great music. So music is out there. Unfortunately, it's a lot harder to, what's the word, monetize it. Um, but the music, I like to say music like water will find a way. So, and I believe it will. Hey, so now, Mr. Randy Stewart, extraordinaire, please play us out here today on the Other Side Radio Show, and we'll have you back soon for much more music and lots more conversation, which is an art form, and we don't want to lose that either. So, take it away. Somewhere over the rainbow way up high There's a land that I've heard of once in a love by Somewhere That you dare to dream Really do come true One day I wish upon a star And wake up where the clouds Are far behind me Where troubles melt like lemon drops Way above the chimney tops That's where you find me oh. 
This has been the Other Side Radio Show, a special edition, live at the Best Western with Canadian singer-songwriter Randy Stewart. I'm Jeremy Davis, along with Joshua Davis, and we will see you 